Welcome to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. It is your bite-sized business advice, and we're already having fun backstage. I got an awesome guest with me today, a life coach, and we're going to help you get over the three beliefs you need to build to explode your business growth. Who doesn't love explosives and business growth? That's what we're all about on this show. Yes, Shelly, I love it. We're jacked up over here. Uh, Harmonious at lunch, though, why are you here? Like I said, it's the bite-sized business advice. It's those little nuggets that you need to help grow your business and take it to the next level. We provide the context to the surplus of content in the world. If you can't make sense of it, why would you listen to it? So we're going to tell you what you're hearing, how to hear it, how it applies to your business. And we're talking about mind, body, and business today. So whoop, that's a mouthful. I'm excited to dive in. First and foremost, though, Shelly, welcome to the show. Good to have you here. Brandon, I can't wait to be here. I've been waiting for it all week and now we're here and we're going to talk all about like what is going up and on in your head when you're like thinking about your business and you're like, why isn't it growing? Like what is going on? What do I need to get done this week to shift my business forward? Mm, that's amazing. I won't tell you what's going on in my head because you don't want to know and the audience probably doesn't want to know either. <laughs> But we want to figure out what's going on in their head and what might be holding you back. So before we dive in, I mentioned you're a life coach. You help entrepreneurs. You help a, a wide range of people. But we're talking to business owners today. How did you get into life coaching? So I got into life coaching because basically my head exploded. I had reason. a baby. It came out. And I went immediately into postpartum anxiety. Hmm which really, really sucks. If you've been there, it's just not fun. It is solvable. It is um, something that is temporary and treatable with professional help. And I got lots of professional help, but I got it a little late. It took about two years to really get properly diagnosed. In that time, my brain decided to just hate on itself. So like that little groove that goes around in your head and tells you how good you are. Mine was like, you're terrible. You're terrible. You're terrible. You're terrible. You're a terrible parent. So the counseling helped me kind of like get back to like functioning, you know, sleeping with the three year old and coaching helped me like take that little opinion of myself and make it back into like, hey, I can do this again. Like I'm good at life. I can build a business, all that good stuff. So yeah. I primarily talk to people that are feeling like they're not good enough, they're not worthy, and we get them back to feeling good and worthy and happy again. That's amazing. And it's such an important transition, first of all, to recognize that you're in kind of that rut and the need to get out of it. But I want to jump back real quick because the the postpartum depression and anxiety thing, I mean, I, I have three kids, but I didn't push them out. I, I don't think that's a surprise to anybody if you're watching or listening. <laughs> <laughs> my my wife never went through that, thankfully, but I'm always curious because, you know, that's something that I personally can't relate to. I feel like a lot of men can't relate to that. What is what is that really like? And what is it? How would that show up for someone in business, man or woman? But like, what are the signs of, of something like that? That's a really great question because I had had depression before. So all I knew was that I'm not depressed because I'm moving. I'm getting stuff done. What it looked like was doing stuff constantly just to keep moving in order to not feel. Mm. Um, really classic example of one of those key moments. I'm like, okay, need something needs to change. Is I'm like pulled over on the side of the highway, bawling my eyes out. I've dropped my daughter off at school, off at daycare, and I'm driving to work. My husband, he's at work. He drives past the other way up in Whistler. And he sees me stopped on the side of the road. Chuck's a massive Yui, comes down. He's like, what the hell is going on? Like, what's the problem? I'm like, oh, no, it, it's fine. I do this every day. Like, he's like, you cry. I'm like, yeah. He's like, while you're driving, because I'm usually actually driving. He's like, yeah. And he's like, no. <laughs> he's like, safety, dad. He's like, he knows I'm not a great driver at the best of times. There's no <laughs> way I should be crying while I'm driving 15 minutes to work. So that was kind of like one of those wake up calls for both of us. I'm like, okay, this doesn't feel normal anymore. Like it's felt normal for me for so long, but now it's like objectively looking at it, it's not, something is not right. So we went and took to the doctors again and we got a bit of extra help there. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, I'm going to use your phrase. Did you say Chaka Yui? 
Was that the the Aussie way? To <laughs> that, was, that was the Aussie. Yeah, you Chuck and Yui. <laughs> Chuck and Yui. Uh, first of all, I'm stealing that. I love that phrase. And that so we need to figure out how to Chuck a Yui in our life here and in our business so that we can yeah. build these beliefs and explode our business. So, but I want to clarify real quick. You said you went to a doctor, a, a therapist. What are the steps? Because you're a life coach. So where do we where do we start? And where do you fall in that line on the path to explosive business growth? So the first step to starting, and I tell everybody this, is just tell someone. Mm. It doesn't matter who you tell. Like, It can be your next door neighbor. It can be anybody that can help you get to that first doctor's appointment or that first counseling appointment or that first therapist and just say, look, I've had a baby. Something doesn't feel right. I don't feel like I'm coping. I'm good enough. I think something's not right in my head it's really really okay to tell somebody because then you can get to that next step which is usually it's counseling some form of medication medication worked great for me i'm so glad i took it and i didn't have to be on it forever i just took it till i felt better they checked all my health made sure i was good and then at the end i was like okay the doctors are saying i'm good but i still feel like i'm not good enough that's when the coaching comes in Mm, I was going to say, because the, one of my hangups with traditional therapy, uh, drugs, whatever it may be, is they get you to this societal norm, if you will, yeah. which has slipped over the years into what's accepted. <laughs> but as entrepreneurs and, and high achievers, we need to be at our peak, at our most effective. Like We need to be top of our game. The societal norm is not going to cut it if you want to grow a business. So yeah. How, yeah, how do you... Well, let's dive in here. What are how do we start building these three beliefs so that we can achieve more, we can grow businesses, we can lead teams and build ourselves to the person that we need to be? Yeah. So these three beliefs are all based on the idea that you need to be showing up for your business, for your business to grow. And if you're not showing up, then it's one of these three reasons. You ready to hear them? Oh, I'm so ready. Let's so let's hear so them. Number one, belief in yourself. Okay. So for anybody that doesn't feel good enough, this is that one. Number two, belief in your tools, skills, products, the thing you do for people. So for anybody that's like not sure if they can get their clients the results that they're trying to get them, this is that one. Number three, belief in your clients. That they're can out you there. Belief in your clients so that they're out there, that you can find them, and that they want to pay for what you have. Okay. All right. I like that. So for anybody that's, like, not moving in their business because they think the economy's in the sh toilet, uh, <laughs> this is that one you need to be working on. Now, we're talking about beliefs, not reality. So beliefs mm -hmm. as in the stories we're telling ourselves in our head because what we're what we tell ourselves in our head is what drives our feelings, AKA our motivation, which then has us either showing up for our business or sitting on the couch. Got it. Okay. So belief in, let's take the first one. Cause I feel like that's probably the biggest with most people. Well, let me ask you then what, what is the most common limiting belief when you start working with people out of those three? It depends how they got into like their their why right like okay. if you get into your business because you've been let go of a job and you're really good at your like a ceo vp consultant you're going to come into your business knowing you can get the job done you're really high belief in your skills and your tools so that's never going to be a problem for you but if you come into your business with like an urgent need to help people with a thing like you have the cure for tonsillitis or whatever, like you have the cure for a real problem in there or like your kid's not sleeping. You're going to have such passion for your clients, but you're going to butt up this sense that you're not good enough to help them. Mm. Interesting. So I guess when we're, when we're starting to tackle this, what, what is the first step that you take after you've identified, you know, where they are and, and what's lacking, what their beliefs are? How do we start to build new beliefs, but not only just build new ones, totally eradicate the existing negative beliefs? 
Yeah, so it depends a little bit on how deeply they are and stuck in the hole, basically. So let's take the first one. When you don't believe in yourself, you've got other feelings that are happening instead. Guilt, shame, fear, any of those. When those are there, nothing else can move in unless we let go, don't go of those feelings. In order to let go of those feelings, you actually need to feel them. I walked a client through this yesterday and just the amount of like emotion that came off her as we let her feel sadness was huge. I haven't talked to her this morning, but I know overnight she will now be able to start have those thoughts of like, oh, maybe, maybe I'm good enough, like creeping in. Like maybe I can stand up for myself. Maybe it's okay to ask for what I need. And when we let go, when we walk someone through the process of allowing and feeling an emotion, they actually start to feel better. And when the emotions are really heightened, like say you're in a huge amount of sadness or fear or anxiety, you can't let other thoughts come in. They just don't come in. Like you mm -hmm. can't have motivation or encouragement or persistence. So you need to bring the emotion down the emotions that are kind of keeping you stuck in order to let new thoughts in. And magically, once those emotions come down, you do get new thoughts coming in. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So when you're when you're having them feel whatever the emotion is, is it are you taking them back to the original moment that they started feeling it? How do you get them to really feel that effectively so that they can empty it? yeah that's a great question so it's not like therapy we're not unpacking mm. an old thing and i'm very careful in my coaching that there is a place for therapy and if they need to be with a therapist or counselor then that's a separate conversation yeah we just let them have that feeling in their body so like they bring it in they notice where it is in their chest or their heart or their shoulders and we let them imagine that that feeling has a color and that that feeling has a shape. And then we allow them, I allow them to kind of imagine that shape comes out in front of your body. And then you can breathe and you can talk to it. And it's, it sounds a little bit woo. You're talking to this imagined shape and color. But what's really happening is that your brain is starting to let new thoughts come out. So you're starting to tell yourself a new story that, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to let feelings out. And then when you let that feeling out, you can start to see, oh, you're you're actually an incredible person. You've just been holding sadness down for so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it might sound woo, I guess. I actually saw uh, Tony Robbins do this at one of his events. And um, I don't know who's idea this was to do first but anyway i saw him do it and i saw the woman's face like literally changed immediately when she imagined this it was like a i think she said it was like a black jagged sphere kind of thing and she was holding it or imagining she was holding it and her face and her whole body and demeanor just changed because it was now out here and she was looking at it and speaking to it like you said and um yeah, it's, you know, this stuff might sound crazy unless you actually see it or experience it. I've never personally experienced it, but like I said, I have the, the experience of watching somebody through it. So um, that's, that's really cool to be able to do. So with this woman you were working with yesterday, she's, she's holding her, her colorful shape out here. She's feeling, what'd you say it was sadness? Yeah. Yeah. And she's talking to it. What are, what are some of the things, not, not that she said, like, don't, don't violate HIPAA or anything like that, but <laughs> what are people usually saying to it? And then what do we, what do we do with this object once we have felt it? How do we get rid of it? So often it changes shape as we listen to what it's trying to tell us. It might change shape or change color or get smaller or turn into fog and float away as we're having a conversation like, why does why do you why are you, often there'll be something like why are you here to protect me or what are you protecting me from and then there'll be some understanding or acknowledge that, that like I don't need protecting anymore you can let me go now and I've seen this come through with lots and it's a very similar type of conversation that often happens like this idea that 
the sadness was here to keep you safe but you're stronger now you don't need the sadness anymore so the sadness can go away so it's like this sense of i'm giving permission to release this thing that was here because i don't need it anymore mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool and most of most of our fears and our anxieties do come from some sort of a protection mechanism that that we've adopted through mm -hmm. stories that we told ourselves words that we continue to repeat to ourselves and that's becomes our identity is it do you find that it's a lot of a lot of people saying i am statements i have statements like they they own whatever it is their existence or their problem it's usually too early to do that that's usually something that comes up in and we actually work on it in usually around coaching session eight or nine when they've explored a bunch of different things and they're actually just choosing now this is what i'm going to tell myself these are now my thoughts that i choose to have about myself when they're kind of like at a six or a seven they're strong enough to think that this is what i want to tell myself mm -hmm. but i will point out doing this kind of like internal allowing the feeling work when you first do it you want to have somebody with you because it's a little like trying to do dentistry on yourself <laughs> it's good analogy. not recommended until you're very 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 good at it yeah well let me ask you on that note i mean what could happen not if you try to drill your own cavities out but if you try to do this unsupervised it's like playing with matches right like don't don't play ma with matches if your parents aren't home but what what could happen to somebody if they tried to take this advice that that we're speaking about and do it on on themselves yeah, so they're not going to hurt themselves in any way, but they might kind of perpetuate the story they're telling themselves mm -hmm. versus knowing how to release it. They're not going to put themselves in any greater trauma than they're already in. But it's kind of going to be like not actually finding the cavities, not actually yeah. filling the holes. Hmm. Yeah, that's um. OK, well, that's good to know, at least that you're not going to make them any deeper, really, or or. Yeah go into any more pain um but then let me let me ask you this question too because i see this a lot with other people and full disclosure today with myself um you know how do you separate the di the difference between these negative beliefs and and holding yourself back versus maybe just a little bit of burnout or exhaustion and full disclosure before you answer the question um, actually, as a matter of fact, I can prove it. I posted on Facebook. It was just an engagement post with, with, uh, my followers. And I said, uh, I'm just not feeling it today. Like I, I, I'm not, what do you do when you're not, you're at your A game. And I don't know if I need to go through this work or if I just need a nap, like, how do you diagnose the difference? Because for me, I, it could be one or the other. I I'm leaning towards nap, but do I have to lean towards, uh, this sort of a, this sort of work that we're talking about? How do you help somebody through that? what's a little bit of practice of like trying like okay i think I, today's a nap and then you get wake, wake up from a nap you're like well i guess that wasn't the thing i needed today <laughs> so you got to get a little practice nap, yeah. at like <laughs> and and it really just is closing your eyes and checking in with yourself and and getting better at kind of being onto yourself when your brain is going Oh, you really need to deal with this emotion, but like your avoidance part is going, just go nap, just go nap. Mm, and you might listen to the napping words for a while and then eventually you'll be like, oh, wait, no, I, knew, I knew it all along. I need to go deal with this particular <laughs> feeling and emotion. Like that's what's coming up again. And it will come up again and again until you kind of take care of it. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. So I'm going to start with nap for those of you watching and listening, and I'll give you my feedback i'll see you on the next episode uh we'll see what's going on then but um no i mean for me it's it really is it's very rare but i know we've been in the middle of a, a launch and and building and it's like it just catches up and i think that's normal too for those of you listening so start with nap then we're going to reach out to shelly so i want to put your website on the screen here um if someone does want to maybe inquire about how they're feeling or or help themselves get to that next level um your website's on the screen how how can they work with you well the best way to connect with me is either by jumping on my mailing list and hitting reply to an email or just finding me on facebook and sending me a message uh, by a dm just reach out because i know how hard it is to just reach out to somebody 
um, how people actually start to work with me as they book a consult. And we have a very private little Zoom screen consult where we find out what's going on in their head. And then in that consult, it's a decision, well, do they want to coach with me or not? And we just work through what that looks like. And we do all the hesitations We're like, oh, I'm not sure I want to. That's all part of the consult. Like it's a really, really structured way to just make a decision on what's next for you. Mm, that's awesome. I know you said it was a 12 week process, but I'm sure people come out on the other side looking totally different and oh. way more energized than when they go in. Totally. And it's it's really incredible to watch my clients go through that and come out at the end and they're like, wow, I couldn't imagine I could have changed this much in 12 weeks. Yeah, that's that's incredible. I, I love stories like that. Um, well, Shelly, I appreciate you coming. This is uh, it's a topic that probably not a lot of people want to talk about, um, kind of like you hinted at right there. But it's it's necessary. And in terms of the harmonious architecture and, and what we talk about on this show, how do you hear this information, right? That's that's the promise I made in the beginning. And it's it's simple. We talk about mind, body, business on this show. Harmonious is business. It's the business architecture that every business needs to have implemented to scale their business efficiently. But the mind and body, if you're the leader, the founder, the owner, you got to have your mind and body in check. It's a three-legged stool. If you're missing a leg, you're going to fall over at some point. Um, and oh, you have a cat on the screen there. For those of you listening, there's a cat that just walked in front of me. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, um, he yeah. meets everybody at lunchtime. <laughs> I love it. Well, he heard lunch in bite size and he was like, I want some. That's awesome. So when you're hearing this information, first and foremost, join me, take a nap. We're going to take a nap right now. We're going to see if this feeling goes away. And then if we need to, we can take that next step. But seriously, if you need help, if you, if you are crying in your car on the side of the road, these are not things to be ashamed of. They are problems that can be solved by the right people. And thankfully, we have Shelly here who is one of the right people who can help you solve that problem. So Shelly, thank you again. This is a great episode. Um, and I'll see you watching, listening, wherever you are. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.